HK58, I'm going to talk about just a few cards that I never were able to uh, cover, which now I'm going to go ahead and cover them. They're cards from the 2016 Commander set, where I could see these cards being placed into Standard or Modern. Uh, again, there'll be a link in the description below about how I suggest getting these type of cards into Modern outside of going through Standard. And, of course, some of these just go straight into Standard and, you know be used so the first card you see is fairy artisans where whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield create a copy of that under an opponent's control creating a copy a token that's a copy of that creature except it's an artifact and then an exile so you keep getting their creature so if they for for example i know this isn't in standard anymore but say they play a thrag tusk you also get a thrag tusk their thrag tusk leaves and gets a three three or they play the next creature, your Thrag Tusks leaves, you create a 3-3 and then get something else. However, I can see this one, this card being used more in Standard than Modern. Uh, it, it would be an interesting card to play around. So this one, I can easily see, see fitting into Standard, not a problem. Obviously not current, but, you know, in the future. Then, pe then players can test around it and play against the odds type strategies. The next one is a Kiri Line Slinger, 2 mana for 0-3, First Strike Vigilance. Gets plus 1, plus 0 for each artifact you control. Yes, I know it does have the partner effect on it, so it, honestly, that doesn't really... That effect on the card would just be useless. So, but outside of that, a 2 mana 0-3 that gets bigger for each artifact you control might make some interesting... Interesting... Uh, decks to be uh, played. Making some sort of Boros artifact or Boros equipment type strategy around this card. Be kind of fun to see what players can build around. And it's really cheap. Yes, yeah, a dice to bolt. However, it's still really good if you have some artifacts to work with it. Um, Brea, the four mana commander of whatever they're going to start calling the four mana color or four color com um combinations whatever that like three color like red white red black and green is jun but like this one i don't know what you would call it but be able to come into play create tokens sacrifice to deal three damage negative 44 and this one is the one i can see going through standard it doesn't do anything for the commander side of it but it still has a unique a unique uh Unique enough abilities where that can be used in standard and maybe even modern. Maybe someone can make some sort of a artifact strategy around four colors. White, blue, black, and red. There's uh, so many different artifact strategies uh, built around these. And going black, red, you could even get the one card I suggested in one of my past videos. Uh, the Duretti Planeswalker. And you got some artifacts to work with. Um... Atroxa, Praetor's Voice, as another one of these cards. Flying, Vigilance, Death Touch, and Life Link for a 4 mana 4-4. Four, four. And then at the beginning of your end step, you can proliferate. That sounds insane. If you can build a deck around that proliferate effect, great. And even if you just play this as a 4 mana 4-4, four, four, Flying, De Vigilance, Death Touch, and Life Link, still pretty powerful, nonetheless. Standard Viable? Oh yeah, definitely. Modern Viable? Well, I would say Standard Viable if they get some... Good, decent lands to or color fixing lands. Outside of that, yeah, standard viable. It'll be it could be easily played in standard modern. Same, same as well. Depending on what if they ever go to this plane, this is one of those cards that can bring proliferate back. Great, right? some more proliferate cards. Um, benefactors dropped one in a green on top all creatures to end of your turn. Whenever a creature and opponent controls blocks. Draw a card, so you could sit there and bash in. If you're going to lose some creatures, as soon as they block, you could still draw a card out of it. And then you also draw a card for playing the card. Nice little card to work into some different stra attacking aggro strategies. It gives card advantage to those uh, uh, aggro decks, like a red-green aggro. Or a mono-green. Stompy would love this card. Just to draw back in. As well as the fact that they're, you know, yeah, they may not be able to get through damage. They get a draw to get some more creatures out, get some more tricks out. There you go. So this one, easily modern viable. I, I could see this even maybe going into standard. 
but we would have to see how well that goes. Um, Humble Defector, two mana, two one, to draw, tap to draw two cards, and then an opponent gains control of it. If they get some more cards to make sure you can keep getting your stuff back, like brand or anything like that, to get your permanents back, the cards that you own, this would actually, you know, may actually see some sort of standard play. But it'd be kind of cool to see what decks are built around this card too. Um, Frenzied Fu or Fusion, or however you say it. Four mana, when it enters the battlefield or at the beginning of your upkeep, gain control of enchanted permanent until end of turn. Untap that permanent. Gains haste until end of turn. Really interesting way to continuously keep taking over an opponent's creature. Especially the fact that untaps it, you gain haste. It's just a threatened permanent. So you keep getting it back. I can see this one easily fitting standard and actually maybe even going into modern some sort of strategy uh, against certain aggro decks. Oh, they have a Tarmogoyf? Well, each, each of my turns I keep getting it so I can beat you in the face with your own Tarmogoyf or whatever other deck set uh, has some really good creatures. Tarmogoyf, you can even get their Dark Confidant. Uh... Snapcaster Mage to block or you know any anything anything. Um, Primeval Protector. This is more of a standard card than a modern card, but someone will probably try to build around it in modern. Cost one less to cast for each creature your opponent controls. Whenever it enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter for on each other creature you control, so you make other things bigger. As well is so if you're if you're getting behind on board. And your opponent has a little more creatures than you. This costs less. You play it. You boost your creatures so you might have a chance to block. It's kind of a defensive viability. It'd be kind of interesting. And also in modern, I will say, there's a certain land that gives your opponents creature tokens. So you could eventually build around that type of strategy. Oh, you can have a creature token. Even though I have a card that prevents you from attacking me, I have a creature token. Something like that. And then you get this big, huge 10-10 that boosts your team. Um, Saskia, the Unyielding, another form, the four mana, uh, commander. I honestly say all of them, not all of these are on the list, uh, but it, I could see them all coming into standard at one point or another. <clears throat> four mana, three, four, Vigilance, Haste, enters the battlefield, choose a player. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, it deals that much damage to the chosen player. So you can really double up on damage on your opponent. So, yeah, it'd be kind of cool to see a deck around it. Because, especially Modern, Modern has a ton of decks that do like to run four colors. Four, five, three, three to five colors. And this one would actually fit in some of those. Some sort of Naya aggro with black to get some Abrupt Decays, Thought Seas, etc. Um, another card, again, the partner part doesn't, you know, have to really be there. They can reprint it without the partner, or they could just keep it the way it is. Uh, a colorless, a black, a red, whenever you cast for the first spell each turn, it deals that damage equal to the spell's converted mana cost to an opponent chosen at random. Unfortunately, if you're playing two-headed giant or 1v1, it's always going to hit your opponent if it's by itself. Whenever you cast your first spell each turn... So it's a, it's, it's a great little way. This one I could see might be too powerful in standard. It could be. It maybe it would change standard up a little bit. It would make it pretty quick, though. Turn three, play this. Turn four, if this set doesn't die, you could sit there and play something else and do some damage to them. Modern it has some... It could have some sort of Rakdos Goblin usage out of it. Since it is a goblin. I don't know. It, it, this one's definitely another one to give a chance. Uh, the last card is Thraso, however you say it, the Triton Hero. Two mana, one, three. It does cost four to scry one, then look at the top card of your library. It's land, put it into your, to the battlefield, tapped, otherwise draw a card. It's a four mana draw a card, scry and draw a card. It's kind of <clears throat> really expensive, but it's also good there for a mana sink. Modern wouldn't see this play. Standard would probably be more of the, um block that you would actually see this played in especially if they brought some sort of merfolk tribal back when they go back into theros 
great card. Other than that, yeah. So, you know, what do you guys think of this video? And let me know what you guys like of the idea of what cards you would like to see in Modern. And what cards you would like to see go through Standard, even. I hope you guys, this is HK58, and have a wonderful day.